Hey, this is Dr. B here, and we're looking at formula writing today. What we want to be able to do is quickly and efficiently and correctly write formulas for ionic compounds, all the different types, and the molecular or covalent compounds, and then just know a few things to watch out for. If you can do this really well, if you can write formulas well and name compounds, you're going to work a lot faster on quizzes, exams, and tests, and you'll do a lot better. And chemistry is just a little bit more enjoyable that way. Let's get started. So you have to understand whether you have an ionic or a covalent compound. And the way you do it's pretty easy. If you have a metal and a non-metal, that's going to be ionic. And there's a few different types. We'll look at those. So something like sodium and chlorine, metal, non-metal, that's going to be an ionic compound. If you have two non-metals like CO or CO2, non-metal plus non-metals, that's covalent and we use a different set of rules. They aren't too bad actually. This is probably a lot easier than the ionic. So let's get started with ionic. Not surprisingly, ionic compounds are made up of ions. We have positive and negative ions and it follows a trend. Group one, one plus, group two, two plus. Transition metals, they're positive, but we have to look at what they're bonded to to figure out if it's a plus two or three or one. 3 plus, go up to 4 plus or 4 minus, then 3 minus, 2 minus, 1 minus, 0. Internalize this table here because this is essential if you're trying to name ionic compounds. So for positive ions, all we do is we go to the periodic table, find the name, and that's sodium ion, Na+. If you're given the magnesium ion, you find magnesium, which is about right here. You write Mg and you put a 2 plus after it. So give this one a try. Aluminum's right about here. What are we gonna have for its formula? So the aluminum ion is three plus, so we just call it Al three plus. That's pretty easy. But then we have these negative ions we have to watch out for, the ones over here. So for the negative ions, these ones right over here, what we do is we write the name, but we change the ending to IDE. So instead of the chlorine ion, chlorine's about right here, we call it the chloride ion. For oxygen, which is right here, give that a try. We take the ending and replace it with IDE, so we get the oxide ion. One more, how about phosphorus? That's right here. For phosphorus, it becomes the phosphorus ion. And that's how you name ions. There are a few little things though to watch out for. So for transition metals, it's kind of easy. These are the ones right here and they are positive. There's a few over in this area and there are some that are always a certain charge, but most of these, their charges vary. So we tell you what the charge is right in the name. Iron 2, that just becomes Fe2+. Lead 2, Pb2+, plus. finally copper 1, Cu+. Plus. So those aren't too bad. The next ones are a little bit of work. These are the polyatomic ions. They're ions because they have charges. That's what makes them ions. But you really can't just look these up on the periodic table. So you kind of have to memorize them or if you're lucky, your teacher will give you a list of them. Either way, memorize these six here and your life gets a lot easier in chemistry. We see these all of the time. Those are the polyatomic ions. So remember, for ionic compounds, these are the simple ionic compounds. We have the metal plus the nonmetal. And remember also, hydrogen is considered a nonmetal. So binary ionic. So we need to worry about charge again because it's ionic. And let's write the formula for calcium chloride. So for calcium chloride, we first write the element symbols. We have calcium and chlorine. So C, A, and C, L. Find the charge for each element and write that above the symbol. Two plus for calcium and one minus for chlorine. And then we want the charges to balance. So we know we could put a two here, 
2 times 1 minus is 2 minus. That would balance it out. That's one way to do it. And then you could check your work. You could take the 2, move it here, and the 1 here, but we don't write the 1. And then we get rid of the charges. And that's the crisscross method. CaCl2, that's the formula for calcium chloride. So now you try one. Magnesium iodide. Write the element symbol for both elements. We write the charges. We have two plus and one minus. Two plus, one minus. And then you'd want two of these to balance out, or you could just crisscross it. You could move the two here, and we don't write the one by conventions. So get rid of that. MGI2. Give you a bit of a more difficult one here. Give aluminum nitride a try. Here's aluminum, it's a metal, and nitrogen are non-metal, so it's ionic. Write the formula. So we write the element symbols, write in the charges, and then we make sure the charges are balanced. In this case, they're the same, so we're done. Aluminum nitride, just ALN. One last one. Here's the test if you learned this, strontium phosphide. And I'm just going to use the crisscross method. Move the three here, the two here, get rid of those. SR3P2, that's our formula. And if you check the charges, they are balanced. Okay, those are the binary ionic compounds. So the transition metals, they're right here, and there are a few here like lead and tin that we need to watch out for. It's pretty much the same thing. We write the elements, find the charges, make sure everything balances. There's just a little difference with the transition metals, and I'll show you that. So if we want to write the formula for iron chloride, iron's right here, it's a transition metal, and here's chlorine. So we write Fe and Cl. And iron, they tell us the charge, it's two plus. So we know that right from the name, and we know that chlorine is one minus. So we can just crisscross them, and you can see that we end up with FeCl2 and all the charges balance. That's pretty much it. Now you try one. How about iron three chloride? Give that a try. So we know we need three of these to balance this out, but you could do the crisscross method here if you wanted. And then we don't write the one. FeCl3. Let's give you a one more here. So this one's a bit tougher, but not too bad. Give it a try. So I'm gonna cross them here, criss them and cross them. And the formula for iron three oxide, Fe2O3. And if you check the charges, they're all balanced out. So that's really it for the transition metals. Not too bad. Let's do some polyatomic ions. Then we'll be done with ionic compounds. So this is a table of polyatomic ions or a list. Sometimes teachers give this to you. Sometimes you're asked to memorize certain ones. Either way, you can't just look these up on the periodic table. You either have this table here or you've memorized them. And at the beginning of the video, I recommended six of them you should memorize. So make sure you do that. So let's write the formula for some compounds with these polyatomic ions. So how about iron two sulfate? So we know we're gonna write the symbol. We know the charge is two plus. This one actually has a transition metal in it. And then the sulfate, we're gonna to have to go to our table here. So let's do the formula. So we get Fe two plus because of the two here. The sulfate is SO4 two minus. It's always SO4 two minus. You can cross them, but you can see they're the same. So we can just get rid of these since they cancel out. And the formula for iron two sulfate, FeSO4. Now you try one. Iron three sulfate. Write the symbol and the charge. Stick that sulfate on the end. Now we have a bit of a problem. We can crisscross them. We can move the two here and the three here and get rid of these. But we do need to put parentheses around the sulfate so we don't have the four and the three together. 
That's the formula for iron three sulfate. Give this one a try. And the hydroxides down here on our list, it's OH minus. It's always OH minus. We write the symbols. So we have cobalt, that's CO, and then the hydroxide, OH minus. And we're told the cobalt's two plus. So let's crisscross them, but you can see that we're gonna need two hydroxides to balance the two plus, but let's crisscross them here. Put the two down here and our one, which we don't write, COOH2, cobalt two hydroxide. All right, one last one. Let's make it a little bit difficult. Copper two phosphate and phosphate right here, that's PO4 and it's always three minus. The minus applies to the whole thing. Give it a try. So I'm just gonna crisscross them here, put the two out here. And then we do need our parentheses. We don't want those two numbers right next to each other. That's it, Cu3PO42, copper two phosphate. And we're done with the ionic compounds. Now you can name all of the compounds you'll come across in general chemistry, at least the ionic compounds. Let's look quickly at the molecular compounds, a few things and wrap up. So for molecular compounds, we have nonmetals together, two nonmetals like CO2 would be copper dioxide or PCl3, that would be phosphorus trichloride. So when we're given the name to write the formula, it's pretty easy. We use prefixes, so we're not worried about charge. So carbon tetrachloride, we'll write carbon and chloride, that's chlorine, and the tetra, tetra means four, like that game Tetras you used to play when you're a kid, maybe you still play it. CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. And we don't write mono on the first element. All right, here, give this one a try. Sulfur dioxide. So we write S and O, we don't write anything for the first one if it's just sulfur. If there were two of them, we'd call it disulfur. But here, just one, we leave it sulfur. Di is two, like a pair of dice, SO2. Let's do two more. Sulfur hexafluoride. SF6. Last one. Carbon monoxide. carbon monoxide. So you can see you put mono on the second one and you don't have two vowels in a row there. But on the first thing, if it's just one, you just leave it as that element name. That's it for the molecular compounds. Let's wrap up with a few things to watch out for. So often you'll see O2 or H2 or N2 in chemical equations. We call this molecular oxygen. It's a molecule because there's two oxygen atoms bonded together. So if you see O2 and it's called molecular oxygen, that's probably what you're looking for. The other thing is acids, they often begin with H, like HCl or H2SO4 or HNO3. So if you're looking at acids, they'll often start with H. And finally, organic compounds, they consist of carbon and hydrogen, sometimes some other elements too, CH4 for example, or C2H6. So just some things to be aware of. You might see some names like methane or ethane or hydrochloric acid. They do follow different rules. That's it. You should be a pro at naming these ionic and molecular compounds. Huge. If you can do this, chemistry gets a lot easier. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.